Hey, what's up? My name is George Gonzalez. We're here in Lenox, California, 90304. Street Gangs, what's up? I was born and raised here in Lenox, California. Um, I believe that I'm a product of my environment. My father was from Lenox. My uncle was from Lenox. My aunt was from Lenox. So at a young age, that's all I seen. It was my only surroundings. Like all my uncle's friends would be around. All my dad's friends would be around. All I seen was people throwing out L's and stuff. So by the time I got to middle school, it was already programmed in my head, like, that's the lifestyle here. And I don't know why, but all the kids in school were already saying, fuck Inglewood. I was saying, fuck Inglewood. I don't know why we said, fuck Inglewood. But it's, like I said, it was already programmed in our heads. I'm not proud of it. And I, unfortunately, I ended up going to jail at a young age. Camps, placements, youth authority county jail, prison, and um, I mean, I've been there, done that. Everything that comes with gangbanging, I've been a part of, I experienced, and <laughs> that shit's bullshit. I went to Buford Elementary in here, here in Lenox, and you know, I was innocent there, like all I cared about was like Power Rangers and cartoons and shit, I didn't really care about anything. I'd seen all the gang stuff around me, but I was just still like, I didn't care about it. Once I got to middle school, that's when people were right there already drinking, smoking, and me being naive, you know, I didn't have a father figure to explain to me what's right and what's wrong. You, you get caught up into it. And then all the other kids, you know, they're, they're in the gang community and they're product of their environments too. So we all just, we just all relate and we all just get together and then we become the next generation. I was naive. You know, I was 14 years old. I didn't have a father figure. Uh, my mom was always at work. My grandma took care of me, but my grandma didn't do a good job because all her kids were from Lenox. So eventually, I started hanging out thinking I was a grown up. You know, my mom's not around, my dad's not around. I'll be in the streets and I got into the hood, but my uncles from Lennox, my grandpa, my dad, my aunt, and that's it. And then as I got older, my little cousin started joining. So I have a 21-year-old cousin and a 24-year-old cousin that are from Lennox, and both of them are in prison. So how old is your grandfather? My grandpa's dead already. But when I was young, I didn't... I seen that he had L and X on his leg right here, but I, like I said, I thought it was normal. Like I didn't really think too much of it, but now that he's dead and now that I look back at it and then I talk to my deals, my, my uncles, they tell me, oh yeah, that's Big Surge. That was your grandpa from Lennox. So you have like three generations in your family that are all members of Lennox. Yeah. What's that like? And hopefully it's the last because I don't want my kids joining Lennox. You could only gangbang for so long. I'm 29 years old. It ain't gonna get easier for me if I'm out here in the streets trying to make a name for myself. Like, I, I've been there, done that. I don't need to prove myself to anybody anymore. You know, I, I, what I need to prove myself to is for my kids. Now, what is your, your lady? You have two kids with her. What's her whole view of the whole situation? Um. Okay, so when I got out of prison, well, everybody, when they're in prison, they convince themselves that they're gonna get out and do good. They lie to themselves. And when they get out, there's temptation everywhere. So you slowly start getting back into the lifestyle. And when I got out, that's what I explained to her, that how I wanted to change, how I'm a changed man. And she fell for it. And by the time she was already in love, I was still fucking up. She introduced me to a different lifestyle. She made me think outside the box. She uh, took me out the hood. She took me to Arizona. She took me to Las Vegas. She took me to, uh, you know, just different counties that I've never been to. And she just showed me a different side of life that I didn't know about. Because before, 
All I knew was Lennox. What's two plus two? Lennox. Who's the president of the United States? Lennox. It was installed in my head, you know, since I was a little kid. That's all I ever knew. So once she started showing me different things, I mean, it, I liked it. Now, you had a, a, a brother that was jumped into Lennox, but never really wanted to be from Lennox. Oh, he's a smart kid. Even though he grew up watching all of us, I guess there's a saying, there's a saying that goes, a smart man learns from his mistakes, a wise man learns from others' mistakes. And I think my brother's a wise man because he learned from my mistakes, from my cousin's mistakes, and he never got into the lifestyle. So even though they did jump him in, he refused. He told them, like, you could jump me in. I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to claim it. And eventually they just didn't pay attention to him. So it kind of goes against the, the myth that you'll get killed if you don't. Oh, that's bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Talk a little bit about, like, the media myths. That's all crap. Um, Okay, so I remember when I was in the streets hanging out tough and I had my little squad going and one of my homies, he got a job, he had, had a kid born, so he slowly started to drift away from us and I would call him a weenie, like, dude, come to the hood, you fucking whack, like, what's wrong with you? But I didn't understand he was already maturing. So at the time I was calling him a bitch, saying he's a weenie, He's not active anymore. But now that I look at him, I'm happy for him. And that's what I want for homies, you know, to grow up and get the fuck out of here. Because, come on, this, this ain't the life to, to live forever. So you're, you're at a point now where you're at the, the, the weenie stage, right? <laughs> I'm not a weenie, though. I mean, like I said, I've bled for Lennox. I've cried for Lennox. I got Lennox tatted all on me. You know, I've sacrificed my whole teenage years for Lennox, it's always going to be a part of me. I got it tatted for a reason. I mean, if I'm at a bar and someone bangs on me, like, where are you from? I'm, I'm from Lennox. But I'm not going to go out promoting myself and trying to start problems. And, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I don't really care as much as before. The way I look at it is, like, I'm growing up now. You know, I'm maturing. I'm 29 years old, but... I feel like I got the mentality of like a 25 year old, like a 24 year old, because I'm still learning. Since I was in jail so much, I never had the time to mature, to learn about insurance, to learn about credit, to learn about life, you know, responsibilities. And now that I'm, you know, I have to deal with it. I'm a father now. Uh, and I'm not one of those dudes that be like, yeah, my kids are my life and woo 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 and they're still in the streets. Fuck that, like, my kids are my life and I gotta do what I gotta do for them. So like, if the homies trip and they don't like it, I, like I said, I don't care, they ain't paying my bills, they ain't buying diapers for my kids, they ain't paying my car, they're irrelevant to me. Thanks for watching StreetGangs.com. Please like and share the video you just watched and leave a comment below to tell us what you think. You can also watch two of our previous episodes to the right. Please visit the link to our Patreon page and support our campaign. And don't forget to subscribe.